This is my collection of completely absurd bicycles, and today I'm gonna tell you all about them. So first, let's talk about the Freak Bike fleet as a whole. Why even own Freak Bikes if I'm not gonna actually ride them regularly? These kinda sit in the storage unit or sit in my garage. Like for example, this Swing Bike stays at Squatch Bikes. If it wasn't for the novelty and the fun, there'd be no reason for me to have any of these. But not too long ago, I was living in a city and I did less mountain biking there. And so I rode my Swing Bike and my Half Bikes and my unicycle around in the street. And it was really fun to do. So with that, some interesting facts. First of all, all of these bikes have Schrader valves, except for the Slingshot bike. That's the only one with Presta valves, and it's also the oldest bike here. We also have a lot of wheel sizes here. On the half bike, we've got a 20-inch wheel, and then I guess those are like four inch. Then we got a bunch of 26s. We have 29 over here. And the unicycle is actually 27.5 plus. So all main wheel sizes are represented. Also, despite the fact that I'm calling these bicycles, bicycle means two wheels. Uh, they don't all have two wheels. Half bike has three wheels. It should be called a one and a half bike. Unicycle has one wheel, but most people regard it as a bike. And there's also a bicycle here that looks really normal. It's the Kent Travail, and I'll talk about that real quick first. So as I said, the Kent Travail looks like the most normal bike of the fleet, and I could see why you would say that if you didn't see how the sausage was made. We made a lot of modifications to this. We drilled holes in the side for cables to go through. I cut the kickstand mount off with an angle grinder. And for the most part, this bike just doesn't resemble its original form at all. We bought this as a $400 Walmart bike. And because we upgraded the fork and the brakes and the bottom bracket and the drivetrain, it's actually quite capable. This is now a bike that I keep around as a loaner bike. It's a size large. I'm a size small, and so I don't have much luck riding it. But a couple of notable tidbits about this bike. First of all, the chainstay got absolutely massacred, especially during our first runs on this bike because there's no chainstay protector on it and there was no clutch on the derailleur. So the chain was just flapping everywhere and you can see what happens to a chainstay if you just let her rip. The other thing, we did a tubeless conversion on the rear tire. That is, we took the inner tube out and we filled it with sealant and pumped it up. I still haven't been able to find a dropper seat post that will fit into this seat tube. And so the bike is always gonna be kind of limited in that regard. But if I do find a dropper post, I actually can get the cables inside the frame. There's internal cable routing in this bike, which is amazing for a department store bike. And so the Kent Travail definitely deserves a spot in the Freak Bike fleet because it's kind of weird. Next up, my Nimbus Oracle 27.5 Plus Mountain Unicycle. Now this is actually the unicycle that I learned to ride a unicycle on. Still can't ride it very well, and I have fantasies that like someday I'm gonna spend some time on the trails with this thing and get good at it, but. Nah, it's probably never gonna happen. So every once in a while, I take this out of the garage and I pedal it around and I try some sketchy stuff on it and it's fun. Yeah. This is actually probably not the easiest unicycle to ride. The smaller the wheel, the easier it is. This is 27.5 plus and so it tends to do a few things. First of all, the larger the wheel on a unicycle, the higher your gearing is. So the harder it is to do little twitchy movements to balance. Second, this is a high volume tire and it tends to squish down a lot. And so it's difficult to steer on pavement. It's really made to be in the dirt. This unicycle also comes with a hydraulic disc brake, which believe it or not is really, really useful. I can go down a pretty steep hill on this thing and keep it under control. 
even though I can barely ride a unicycle. Something else interesting about it, and I guess this is the case with any unicycle, the hub and the bottom bracket are sort of one piece over here. You can see this clamps down on this bearing over here and the cranks go all the way through it. And I guess that would be kind of similar to how a penny farthing drivetrain would work. Now, one thing I never really learned how to do well on this unicycle was free mount. That is just stand in the middle of a parking lot and just jump up on the unicycle. I have to kind of hold on to something to get started or else it takes me forever. But this is an item that I will never sell or give away. I'll always have it because it's just so cool. It doesn't take up a lot of space and it's fun to just jump on every once in a while. So this next bike I showed to you guys recently, the Slingshot bike, never intended to keep this. I bought this for a video and yeah, here it is. Now, as an aside, some bikes I have just because I need to have them to run this YouTube channel. For example, I have a fat bike and I never ride it, but sometimes for a video, I need a fat bike. And after the Slingshot video, it occurred to me, sometimes I need a weird 90s bike. Sometimes I need to show weird 90s components. And the Slingshot bike is a perfect example of all of this. First of all, the whole concept, it's got this flex point right over here. And then instead of a down tube, it has a cable and it has a spring over here. I demonstrated in my video how that actually takes up some of the bumps on the trails and offers early 90s compliance. This is before rear suspension linkage became commonplace and manufacturers were coming up with all sorts of weird ways to solve the rear suspension problem. This was one of them and it actually rides really, really smooth. Now, on top of being able to use this bike for demonstration purposes in videos, whether I wanna show an early 90s drivetrain or an early 90s fork, or just the geometry of the freaking thing. I could actually lend this out to friends and family. If somebody's visiting and we're gonna do a family greenway ride, maybe with a little bit of gravel, I don't really have to worry about this thing snapping in half. It's gonna be fine, it's easy to ride. This is a really weird bike, it's really dated, but man is it cool, and man is it a great example of such a weird beast. And so will I hold on to the Slingshot bike forever? I don't know, if bike values go back up, maybe I'll sell it on eBay, but for now, it lives here. Ow! So this next one is the half bike, and this goes way back. This was one of the first products that was like sent to me by a company to review on my channel. I don't know what to tell you about this thing. It is not fun to ride. <laughs> you can't climb hills with this. It's fun to watch people try to ride it. <laughs> it looks like it would be really fun, but it's not fun. Now, with that said, it's subjective. And there are people who just absolutely love these things. There's a whole half bike community. And the main thing that they say is that it's really good exercise. You're standing up on this thing. It's sort of a full body experience trying to make it work. And so I don't think there's that many people who are using this as practical transportation. Let me show you why. Okay, so you have this little crank set here and then you have these little teeny handlebars and they don't do anything. And you have to like tilt it to make it steer. And then it steers with the back wheels. It doesn't steer sharp. It's not particularly maneuverable, not if you compare it to a real bike. Now, despite all this, I still have the half bike because it's extremely interesting. So first of all, this part over here is actually made of wood. And I guess it makes it lightweight. It gives it some compliance. It makes it more comfortable to ride. And then the frame is this big wavy part that's made of metal. And then there's all sorts of interesting parts in between. There's this fiberglass reinforced nylon for the bottom bracket. It has three speeds. You don't see it. It's got a Sturmy Archer hub. So this is an internal gear hub. It's like a transmission in there. You can see the shifters right up here. You don't have to be pedaling to shift it. And so it gives you a little bit of range. And it's got these little tiny wheels on the back with little tiny tires. And then it's got two sides of like a caliper brake and the brake just kind of rubs against the side of the wheel to stop it. It's really fascinating. And you see these bikes on eBay for a considerable amount of money. People want them. And so I think my opinion about it not being fun is just wrong. I hate this thing. So my main criticism of the half bike is that I don't find it fun. 
This has the opposite problem, it's too fun. You lend this to someone, you're never getting it back. This is the swing bike, and as you can see, it's got a pivot point right here. It's bent, they all do. Every swing bike ever made just bends right there, but it's fine, still works well. It doesn't look like it would be fun. It looks like it would just be pointlessly difficult to ride, but actually it's quite intuitive, and once you get used to it, it's just gangster. You ride this bike down the street and you lean into turns and you just whip it around and there, there's literally nothing as fun. It is amazing. Now this bike has been living at Squatch. One of their mechanics was taking it to get pizza and he would ride back from the pizza place holding the pizza box on the swing bike, swinging it around. And he could have taken one of many high-end mountain bikes that are in the shop, but he would take the swing bike. It is, in fact, single speed. It originally came with cruiser handlebars, but Pat put some big straight mountain bike bars on it, a mountain bike stem. And yes, the pivot point here just gets bent back. You go off of curbs, you jump off some ledges, hit some doubles on it, eventually it starts bending. Everyone I've ever seen is bent. This is a bike I'll never sell, I'll never give away. It's ridiculously fun. It's gonna be something that I'm gonna show my kids how to ride someday. I share it with everybody who comes to visit. You gotta take a ride on the swing bike. This is like the novelty bike to end all novelty bikes. Now this last bike is the tall bike and it has the largest standover height of any bike I own. Now of the group, this is the only one that I actually built from scratch. I tore down two steel bike frames, I cut them up, I welded them together, painted the frame. I kind of invented this drivetrain system over here. I even got front and rear brakes working on it and that's rare for tall bikes. Yes, these are common. You see tall bikes everywhere and they're usually uh, kind of a hodgepodge. You don't see many complete builds with gears and front and rear brakes and everything. Now like the swing bike, this is also way, way, way fun to ride. It's much easier to ride than the swing bike. Anybody can ride this thing. You literally just mount it and ride it around like any bike. Just take your foot, put it over here. I'm five foot four, by the way, and just get on it and start riding. It's extremely, extremely intuitive. Once you're up here, it just, it just feels like a bike. I also found out that if you ride this uphill, like even a slight hill, it just wants to flip over backwards because A, it's really tall and B, there's two bike frames here. So you can see the seat tube just keeps slanting back until it's like over the rear wheel. The center of gravity's all messed up on this bike. So let me tell you some other weird things about the tall bike. So first of all, the tall bike has four bottle cages because it's got two bike frames. So of course, why wouldn't we install four bottle cages on it? And riding tall bikes would make you thirsty in theory because you'd only do it in like a tropical island or something. This is not a bike you wanna ride if you really have some place to go. This is also one of the only freak bikes that I keep in my garage at all times because on lunch break or if I just get bored, I grab it and ride around the driveway with it. And if somebody visits, I make them ride it. They'll be like, oh, I don't want to get broken off today. And I'm like, no, it's, it's easy. And they all admit it once they get on it. They're like, yeah, it's like riding a bike. So hope you enjoyed taking a look at all my freak bikes today. These are not bikes you see all the time. They're not bikes that I have out all the time. Like I said, the swing bike kind of lives at Squatch. This only gets lent out when people come over. The half bike, I never ride. And the unicycle, I never ride. But these bikes are still a joy to own. They're still really fun. I don't put that many miles on them, so they don't require much upkeep. And if you are a bicycle enthusiast like me, you understand why freak bikes are something fun. I hope you enjoyed this video today. I hope you learned something. And if you didn't, I hope you at least found this entertaining. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time. Oh, now it's got dog dugan.